Hello friends, welcome to the Block Thrasher Daily Crypto Update. It's Thursday, April 8th, 7.46 a.m. in the beautiful state of Washington, still here out, just outside the Spokane area. Probably going to be here for a little while longer before I head back toward Idaho and then make my way down south to Texas and maybe then on to Wyoming. Just going to continue to be traveling for a while, maybe for a long time. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Listen, the Block Thrasher Daily Crypto Update is your number one source for daily news, commentary, analysis, and education. You don't have time. Who has time? People, everybody's busy, right? To go look at what is happening in the crypto space and to find the most important news stories of the day. So I do that for you, and then I bring those to you, hopefully in an entertaining and fun way. All right, today we're going to look at the market first to see what's happening with uh Total market capitalization and prices. Currently, the global crypto market cap is $1.95 trillion. So that is up in the last 24 hours, 2.13%. Of course, that's down from recent all-time high where it did break the $2 trillion mark. So we'll be watching that again. You know, it's interesting just to think. I was looking just earlier today. If you use Delta, which, by the way, if you're not, it's a phenomenal... Delta and Blockfolio would be the top two crypto asset tracking platforms, uh, portfolio trackers, either Delta or Blockfolio. You could just Google those if you're looking for something like that. Anyway, I was looking at it earlier today and I was looking at stocks and, and, and looking at some of the cap, the market cap of some of the, of the stocks. The, the, uh, the, the number one stock by total market capitalization is Apple which is currently $2.112 trillion. So it's interesting to just think about that, how at this point, Apple is still worth more in terms of market cap than the entire cryptocurrency space. Pretty unbelievable. Right, off, right under Apple's Microsoft, which comes in at $1.87 trillion. Then Amazon at $1.62 trillion and Google at $1.5 trillion. Well, Google has two offerings, so I'm not sure how that works. Facebook is uh, is really, really the little guy <laughs> at $872 billion, and Tesla comes in at $663 billion. So we've got a bit of a ways to go before the crypto space, the crypto space uh, surpasses Apple alone. And, of course, before we see Bitcoin, surpass Apple in terms of total market cap. Currently, Bitcoin's total market cap is $1.08 trillion. So it would have to double. We'd have to see a Bitcoin of close to $100,000 in order for its market cap to equal that of Apple. Isn't that incredible? Currently, Bitcoin's price is $57,836. It's up 1.72% in the last 24 hours. Starting to recover a little bit. It's still down for the week. We're seeing a lot of green across the board here in the altcoins today. Ethereum is up 2.11% in the last 24. It is now $2,047. Binance, Binance coin is just absolutely killing it. It continues to amaze. Really does. It is up 30% in the last seven days, up 8.6% in the last 24 hours. It's currently $418.70. What's also interesting to note, if we look at the total market cap for Binance, which is currently 64,700, sorry, that's not thousand, 64 billion, correction, 64 billion dollars, and we compare that to Ethereum's 236 billion, we can see that Binance is almost one third, right? 64 times three, 240 plus. slightly over 30% in terms of market cap. So it continues to, to inch toward Ethereum. And then if you were to take Binance and Cardano and Polkadot and put those three together, we're looking at 120, close to half of the Ethereum market cap. So Ethereum's still well in the lead in terms of the smart contract platforms. However, these alternatives are inching closer every every single day. Oh, interestingly enough, while we're on the topic of Ethereum, gas prices are down, down to 135 GUE for standard. We've been, we've been seeing about what 190 up to two two plus for the last few days, last week or so. 
So that's a good thing to see. Gas prices are down. People are going to like that for those trades on Uniswap, etc. XRP. XRP is in the news once again. It is up 60 of... Whew, let's just say 70 to round it off. 70% in the last week. Up 1.26% currently at 96 cents. And it has reclaimed number four in, in, in terms of market cap. Wow. Let's just jump over and talk about the XRP story since we're on it. And then we'll go back and take a look at the, the market. There's a new petition which is asking the SEC chair, Gary Gensler, who, from, from what we know, is crypto-friendly, right? Former professor, I, I believe, at uh, MIT, who taught on blockchain and Bitcoin. So they're asking him in this petition to drop the Ripple lawsuit. This article pointed out a couple of very <laughs> interesting, very entertaining in a way, things about about this situation with uh, XRP and the SEC. An XRP advocate, so let's just jump into it real quick here. An XRP advocate started a petition to the SEC chairman nominee, Gary Gensler, asking him to end the lawsuit against Ripple. Should he be confirmed as the new chair? <laughs> it is kind of interesting that we've got a very crypto-friendly chairman coming into the SEC amidst uh, this, uh, this lawsuit from the SEC toward Ripple. But there's there's more and there's more here that gets interesting. So the Ripple community has launched a new petition to quote stop the war on XRP. Crypto and policy founder Thomas Hodge has started a change.org petition directed at Securities and Exchange Commission Chair nominee Gary Gensler, asking him to end the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple once he's confirmed as chairman of the commission. So if you were so inclined, you could go to change.org and find that petition and sign it. Announcing the news Wednesday, crypto and policy called on Gensler to investigate the potential motives. This is where it gets interesting. They're calling on him to investigate the potential motives of former SEC Chair Jay Clayton and his SEC Director of Corporate Finance, William Hinman, for, quote, favoring Bitcoin and Ether while harming XRP. The petition alleges that Clayton and Hinman could have had financial interest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. <laughs> Here's a quote from the statement. While Clayton and Hinman were in office, they were asked if Bitcoin and other were securities. They said very clearly on the record, no, they are not securities. So keep trading them. They both took money from companies. Here's where it gets interesting. Both Clayton and uh, who's the other dude? William Hinman. They both took money from companies with direct or clear indirect interest in those public statements. Hodge further alleged that Hinman received millions of dollars in payments from the law firm of Simpson Thatcher, which is a member of the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. The petition claims that Hinman collected checks from the firm while the firm earned fees supporting the initial public offering of Chinese crypto mining giant Canaan. The XRP advocate outlined the uncertain regulatory status of the altcoin, stating that Clayton spent four years of his tenure without providing a clear response on whether XRP was a security. This is also a really, really good point. Hodge is pointing out here. He continues. But on the final day in office, on the final day in office, isn't that interesting? Clayton had his SEC file a massive lawsuit against Ripple claiming it had sold XRP as an illegal unregistered security for seven years. So, so the SEC alleged that Ripple and all holders of XRP should have known for the last seven years that XRP was a security when the SEC itself repeatedly said it didn't know it until the day it filed the lawsuit in December 2020. Unbelievable point. Why would the SEC just sit by for seven years and ignore this the situation, the issue? Suddenly, in 2020, all of a sudden, be like, "Oh yeah, this is an unregistered security, and we're gonna go after it." And then you've got this possible these other motivations coming out that these two, the the chairman Clayton and Hinneman might have had a conflict of interest? At the time of writing, the online petition has collected about 1,600 signature, signatures. As previously reported 
by Cointelegraph. The SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple Labs as well as its CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, and co-founder Christian Larson on December 22, 2020, alleging that XRP was a $1.3 billion unregistered securities offering. It was also interesting the timing of that because it was like right before Christmas, which is historically one of the best times for the crypto market. Amid the ongoing legal battle, a U.S. court granted Ripple Labs access to the SEC's documents on defining crypto assets as securities in early April. Earlier this week, the price of XRP crossed the $1 mark for the first time since March 2018. The latest price millstone is still far from its all-time high of above $3 recorded in January of 2018. <laughs> so this is this is just getting it seems like every day there's some news about this lawsuit and it gets more and more interesting i decided that i was gonna start to take a look at the sec and study some of its history so i've been doing a bit of a deep dive in that and i might bring some of that to you guys here in coming episodes because there is a lot of interesting information there about the sec started in 1934, which I found to be quite interesting, just one year after the gold confiscation that we've talked about so frequently, started by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, initially started in order to try to bring confidence back to the market because of the amount of scams that had been been occurring but i'm not going to go deep into it but just real briefly it's interesting because the the guy that roosevelt appointed to the chairman the first sec chairman was actually guilty of committing fraud and when asked about it roosevelt said what well, better way to catch thieves than to hire a thief to do it so <laughs> just kind of a little interesting an interesting fact, but all throughout the history of the SEC, they've had many successes in stopping fraudulent activities, but then they've also had many spectacular failures, uh, even of late, recently coming under quite a bit of scrutiny after the 2008 uh, subprime mortgage crisis in which they failed to protect many, many, many people. Uh, also, the Bernie Madoff incident and Ron and others. So a lot has happened under their watch. Interesting story, interesting history. Maybe we'll pick up on it a little bit in the future. Why does this happen? Why do we see fraudulent activity happen in the markets? Well, it could be due to cupidity. Now, cu cupidity, I mean, that... That's just a thing that, wait a second, cupidity. What is that? Oh, that's our word of the day. Let's take a look at it. Cupidity. Cupidity. It is eager or excessive desire, especially to possess something. Greed. So this could be another word for FOMO. Fear of missing out would be cupidity. There's a lot of cupidity going on in the market right now. Have you succumbed to cupidity, my friend? Do you just like have some excessive desire to stack more crypto? Or maybe you wish you had a thousand Bitcoin? <laughs> cupidity. It's C-U-P-I-D. Just like Cupid. I-T-Y. Cupidity. It's a good word. I like this one. It's the word for Thursday, April 8th. All right, let's finish up our market overview with the price price discussion. Cardano, Cardano is is at number six currently, up 0.76 percent, not much, to a dollar twenty one currently. Not much news uh, with Cardano today, other than that they continue to move in the direction toward the release and update of Alonzo which will bring smart contracts to the platform that will be happening throughout April and May. Uh, they have announced that 
in the next 360 Cardano podcast update, which I think is going to be coming out. Oh, I don't want to get the date wrong. It might be May 8th or something like that. I could be wrong, so don't hold me to that. Uh, They will have a hard announcement. So there will be a hard announcement soon, hard date given as to when the uh, Alonzo up, the update will come that will initiate Alonzo. Uh, I think it's yeah, yeah. And that will go that will go live. And uh, oh, there is one news item today with Cardano. I was forgetting for a second. Cardano's first supply chain application goes live, and it has been deployed on a Georgian winery. So this is a supply chain uh, verification, traceability, anti-counterfeit solution that the Cardano Foundation has rolled out in conjunction with, in partnership with uh, this company called ScanTrust. And so what they do is Cardano has the ability to include metadata along with transactions onto the blockchain and this allows for scan trust to connect to the cardano blockchain and track all of the inventory that comes from any manufacturer really but in this case the winery so that that you can literally trace a specific bottle back to you know its entire supply chain back to where it came from and ensure that it is a legitimate uh, product and not one that's being copied. As this is a huge problem around the world. Uh, for years, the global counterfeit goods market has been rising. The Chamber of Commerce projects it will hit $4.2 trillion by 2022. And obviously that is a major pain point for these manufacturers of goods. So this is going to be a real use, real life use case for the Cardano blockchain that is, uh, I think, going to be become uh, very big, very big. So we'll keep an eye on that. Polkadot. Polkadot is up 0.45% to $40.58. Uniswap is also up 2.39% to $29.54. Litecoin is not moving down, down slightly, $224.23. Chainlink, 0.82% 0.82% up, just barely in the green, $32.36. Theta, Theta has been doing well, holding on to number 11 there. Uh, it is uh, up 5% last week, up 7, 0.78% in the last 24 hours. It is $12.91. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is $635. Stellar, $0.48. Cents. Filecoin, $152. Tron, $0.12. Cents. Dogecoin, 0.06128. Clayton, $3.23. And I, Solana, Solana has been doing well. Oh, it's down now. In the last 24 hours, down 3.35%, but up 34.89%. Solana is one that I think we're going to see, if I had to guess, move up in market cap. It's currently at 22. BitTorrent, BitTorrent is up whopping 66% on the week, 7.3%. Currently, BitTorrent is 0.00902. Two. I've talked about BitTorrent before, so I'll just drop that. All right, moving on to some of the uh, news items of the day. I I really, really, really uh, f- like the the point that is being made here by this author at at uh, BTCManager.com. Oh, excuse me for a second. I just had to grab a little bit more of that pedal. Mmm, so tasty. Headline is fiat, not crypto, and Bitcoin predominantly used in money laundering. Yes! Thank you for this research, Dalmas. Tech. Crypto, including Bitcoin and Monero, have had some bad rap over the years for their alleged use as vehicles. Profile. Prof. Prof. prof proliferating, I thought it was going to say profligating, proliferating illegal activities like money laundering. This is a big fat lie. 
From the onset, and perhaps because of the misunderstanding of the technology powering Bitcoin and the nature of Bitcoin transactions, bad actors jumped in hoping to move their ill-gotten proceeds, but to their unexpected bad ending, because they were traceable. Over the years, millions worth of Bitcoin have been confiscated by law enforcement and auctioned, making some of the greatest personalities in Bitcoin, read Tim Draper, billionaires. Compliance, security, enhancement, and maturing crypto sphere. However, much can't be said about banks. What do you say, banks? Wait a second. You're telling me that money laundering happens at banks? Surprisingly, even with the opaque nature of operations, the mainstream media continues with their misinformation campaign. They are deliberately excising hard facts in a desperate attempt to cover banks who are the main culprits. Bitcoin and most crypto networks, unlike traditional legacy rails, operate transparently and openly with no single entity in control and third parties hopefully, hopefully able to analyze all coin movements and therefore critical financial information. They can analyze huge sets of data and even crack the identities of transactors since by default all Bitcoin transactions due to cryptography are pseudonymous. Cryptocurrency exchanges, classified as financial service providers, have made it even incredibly hard for users, its clients, to launder money in any form. Compliance via Know Your Customer and Anti-Money Laundering AML rules help regulators to get behind the wall of an anonymity and pseudonymity of crypto transactions. Therefore, it is a bad idea for bad elements to abuse this new financial tool. That's not all. Third-party blockchain analytics firms contracted by law enforcement or exchanges whenever there are exchanges hacks have grown in sophistication over the years. For instance, Chain Analysis has a contract with the United States Internal Revenue Service (IRS). They claim to have required, they claim to have the required technology to unlock the anonymity cloak of Monero transactions. However, as BTC Manager reports, that task is by several magnitudes complex as per the developer's admission directly involved in that project hacking as an excuse is a tired narrative often critics of crypto and bitcoin shout from the rooftops that the number of crypto hacks most of the time citing mark carpellis and the events around mount gox serve as a lesson of course this was years ago but cutting some slack out of Bitcoin and early exchange facilitators, the technology had only been around for less than five years. While 850k Bitcoin were stolen, justice has been served. Already there are plans for recourse in Japan. Besides, one suspect, Alexander, Alexander Vinnick, was arrested in 2017 while vacationing in Greece for receiving roughly 85k Bitcoin traced back to Mt. Gox. There are other hacks like CoinCheck, Zai Finance, and more. The good news is the number of hacks has been reducing over the years. Additionally, there are ingenious safety nets like Binance's Seifu and other elaborate insurance measures employed by institutional crypto custodians to protect funds in unwanted eventualities. But here's the part of this that is interesting that I really wanted to share with all of you. $200 billion dollars Fees and penalties paid by U.S. banks alone for money laundering charges. That cannot be said for banks, all of the above, who are arguably master money launderers using fiat. They also seem to be getting away with it every time, judging from multi-billion dollars in fines paid as settlement. And numbers don't lie. In 20 years alone, banks in the U.S. alone have racked up $200 billion in fines and penalties in over 395 cases. Affected banks include J.P. Morgan, Citi, and Wells Fargo, to name a few. Here is the interesting bit. Their behavior has deteriorated in the years after the Great Financial Crisis, GFC 2008-2009, according to Better Markets. An advocacy group based in Washington. Alarmingly, between 2008 and the end of 2020, banks in the U.S. have been hit with 314 major legal cases, settled for multi billion dollars. These cases range from bribery, money laundering, and the massive fraud of mortgage backed securities, MBS, 
that was almost catastrophic for banks, but birthed Bitcoin. Banks are repeat offenders. But here's the bad news. Recidivism is shockingly high. Worse, these global banks being too big to fail are often bailed out using taxpayers' money. Even after their misdeeds of money laundering and other criminal pro conducts like feed terror networks. According to Better Markets, if global banks were put to a higher standard, they would all be taken out of markets. So looking forward, even still, in a world of gray, as Shengpeng Zhao of Binance puts it, crypto companies, mainly exchanges, consistently maintain high standards in the spirit of blockchain transparency. They also integrate technology and artificial technology for monitoring purposes while remaining compliant with existing laws to prevent criminal activities. Janet Yellen, of course, being one who has stated this uh, most recently, obviously one of the most notable, I should say, stating this most recently, that crypto is used for money laundering, etc. And the evidence just is the opposite. It's the banks who get to slap on the wrist, finds that are inconsequential to them, and they continue to do it, and they do it more and more. So, just the other day, we had quite a bit of a, a market downturn. We saw a lot of red, 10 to 15% drops in the prices. Bitcoin itself was close to 60,000, dropped down to 55,000. What happened? What happens in these markets? Every single time, it seems like the data shows that whales buy these dips and the retail investors panic and think, well, this is the end of the bull market and they get out, right? So whales deposit 476 million USDT in one hour to grab the Bitcoin dip, according to Glassnode data. The CIO of Makovsky Capital has shared a chart provided by Glassnode which shows crypto whales actively buying Bitcoin on the dip. 476 million USDT was deposited in one hour. Data shared by Glassnode Analytics Firm has demonstrated that on April 7th, crypto whales took just one hour to deposit a whopping 476 million USDT to digital exchanges in order to buy Bitcoin on the dip. Whenever Bitcoin dips, Lex Mikowski comments, it seems that there is always money by, for large investors to buy it. Pointed this out before and will continue to do so. This seems to be what is happening of late. All right, let's take just a couple of moments and uh, talk about, well, you know what, actually, before we do that, I wanted to share this one article with you. It is not so much a crypto story as it is uh, stocks because you know it has to do with Robinhood, which obviously is a platform, though, that a lot of people do use to purchase their crypto. Apparently, Robinhood is, is seeking more liquidity of its IPO, and it, re it failed to report some trades publicly which is really the interesting part of this story. From the beginning, Robinhood has embraced the move fast and break things ethos of Silicon Valley startup culture. To the chagrin of the regulators who have struggled to keep abreast of the pioneering discount brokerage credited with inspiring a new retail trading boom. A few years ago, Robinhood announced plans to launch a savings account, but quickly backtracked amid a flurry of embarrassing reports about the company neglecting to seek a banking license. Oops. Now, as Robinhood reportedly prepares for its $30 billion IPO, Reuters has exposed another slip-up by the company. The retail brokerage apparently neglected to report OTC trades in fractional shares that it executed for customers over the last year, a mistake that could warrant another fine for the company. Robinhood first launched fractional share trading in December 2019. Since then, fractional share trading offered via rivals like Schwab and the Cash App have made buying small slices of shares in Amazon and Tesla extremely popular among retail traders, hoping to invest small dollar amounts, as little as $1 at a time. Basically, getting into the breadth, of, let's jump on down to FINRA. FINRA rules state that all trades had to be reported, including trades of less than a share, in the name of transparency, since market participants may base decisions on understanding not just prices, but who's trading what and when. They didn't do that. Reuters confirmed Robinhood's lack of reporting with a company insider who was not named. Reuters could not determine how many trades Robinhood failed to report, 
Otherwise, on December 31st, Robinhood users hold 802.5 mm in shares bought through its fractional share program. The brokerage said in a regulatory filing, many of those purchases may have been executed by wholesale brokers. A spokeswoman for Robinhood declined to comment on the reporting issue, but said the company, which had 13 mm customers as of November, only executes a very, quote, very small percent of its fractional orders from its own inventory. Interesting. While the, while the Reuters story doesn't delve into the implications of this reporting failure, Robinhood's payment for order flow business model would suggest that these OTC trades were shared with Citadel, Robinhood's biggest market-making client, long before they were shared with the public. So, Robinhood needs more capital. They're, at, they're requesting more capital. And failed to report more trades, implicitly disadvantaging traders who use its platform in favor of clients like Citadel. But apart from all this, Robinhood is totally trustworthy. Tongue in cheek. A little bit of sarcasm there. Yeah, this is not good. Not good. Things not looking good for Robinhood. <laughs> all right. Crypto glossary. We'll just take a few minutes here so we can roll through the bees and uh, get some of these terms defined in crypto. A bag is slang for a large quantity of a specific cryptocurrency. Alternatively, but less frequently, used to refer to the contents of an individual crypto's portfolio. So you'll hear somebody say, yeah, when the market turned down, I got caught holding the bag, holding the big bag, holding big bags. A bag holder, also an investor who continues to hold large amounts of a specific coin or token, regardless of its performance. So are you a bag holder? So if you're a hodler, which is another word we'll get to when we get to the H's, who just hodls no matter what the price is, you could also be called a bag holder. A bear, and this is a term that comes from the traditional financial world and markets, someone who believes that prices in a given market will decline over an extended period, such as such a person might be referred to as bearish. So, of course, you'll hear about the bulls and the bears fighting and the bulls trying to push the market up and the bears trying to push the market down. The bulls believe that the or if they're bullish long term, that the market will rise. If they're bearish, that the market will decline. Bear trap. The attempted manipulation of a specific cryptocurrency's price based on the coordinated activity of a group of traders. So these are your Wall Street bet kinds of groups of people that get into a, a form of some kind discord telegram somewhere and they try to work together and move together and create a bear trap manipulate a specific cryptocurrency's price and of course with the smaller smaller the smaller the market cap is the easier it is to do such a thing bit license a business license permitting regulated virtual currency activities issued by new york state department of financial services bitcoin atm or also known as a btm an automated teller machine atm or cash point that allows the user to buy and sell bitcoin well these have just exploded in recent recent months years last year i would say seeing it everywhere gas stations and then there has been partnerships with coin star and others that have just dramatically increase the number of Bitcoin ATMs. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal, the BIP, B-I-P, BIP, the standard format for documents proposing changes to Bitcoin. Kind of like the Ethereum improvement proposals. Bits, a commonly used unit or subdivision of a single Bitcoin. Block, a file containing information on transactions completed during a given time period. Blocks are the constituent parts of a block chain. A block explorer is an application enabling a user to view details of blocks on a given blockchain, also known as a blockchain browser. Block height, a value describing the number of blocks preceding a given block in the blockchain. 
So yes, every blockchain, new blocks are entered at a given interval of time, and each one's numbered. And you can go and look at what number the current block height sits at. Block reward. The coins awarded to a miner or group of miners for solving the cryptographic problem required to create a new block on a given blockchain. Bitcoin is currently 6.5, I believe. Either 6 or 6.5, but I'm pretty sure it's 6.5 if I recall correctly. Blockchain. A blockchain is a distributed ledger system, a sequence of blocks or units of digital information stored consecutively in a public database, the basis for cryptocurrencies. Yes, blockchain, most simply stated, is a database. Bollinger Band, a tool developed by Bollinger to help in the recognition of systemic, systemic pattern recognition and prices. It is a band that is plotted two standard deviations away from the simple moving average or exponential moving average in some cases. And this will be used in technical analysis. Bonding Curve. A bonding curve is a mathematical curve that defines the relationship between the price and the supply of a given asset. Bots, automated software that can carry out tasks such as cryptocurrency trades, brute force attacks, or BFA. It's an attempt to crack a password or key through automated trial and error. So this typically is a little bit of software that runs. Somebody will write on Linux or something and plug in and it'll just iterate through like a uh, dictionary of words and combinations of those words and numbers and just brrr, as fast as the computing power processor will allow it to go attempt a brute force attack bubble a bubble is when an asset is traded at a price exceeding that assets intrinsic value i don't care much for that definition the whole idea of intrinsic value being sort of abstract at best. When I think of a bubble, it has more to do with sentiment of the participants in the market. People FOMO in and, and buy, 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 buy without fundamentals or just because we act as a herd, drive the price of something up. There's a bubble. There could be other factors that correlate to, to to bring that about as well and then and then the bubble pops and obviously we see a huge market drop so bubbles also often used not just to talk about a single asset but a market the market as a whole bug bounty a reward offered for the identification of vulnerable vulnerabilities in software Bull, a person that is optimistic and confident that market prices will increase. This person is also known to be bullish about the market or price. Bull trap. A bull trap is the opposite of a bear trap. When a steadily declining asset appears to reverse and go upward, but soon resumes its downward trend. Burned. Cryptocurrency tokens or coins are considered burned when they have been purposefully and permanently removed from circulation. Buy the blank and dip, BTD, BTFD, an enthusiastic exclamation by supporters of a cryptocurrency to buy while prices are at a low point. A buy wall. What is a buy wall? A buy wall is a disproportionately large buy limit order placed on a cryptocurrency exchange. So you will see this with whales sometimes where in order to keep a price, sort of create a wall and keep a price from going below, or above a certain point, they'll just put in this massively huge order. And so it's like, you know, <laughs> the little birdies will come and maybe pick away at it at times, but nobody's able to quite break through that buy wall because it's so huge. Byzantine Fault Tolerance, BFT, Byzantine Fault, fault Tolerance, is the, pro is the property of a computer system that allows it to reach consensus regardless of the failure of some of its components. So a lot of the proof-of-stake platforms, Cardano, Polkadot, and others are, are BFT 
consensus algorithms, uh, which, as described there and s simply stated, just means that even if a number of the nodes are not online for some reason, the algorithms, the consensus algorithms can still reach consensus. Byzantine general's problem, a situation where communication that requires consensus on a single strategy from all members within a group or party cannot be trusted or verified. Okay, friends, that will, that will be enough for today with our crypto terminology. I hope you have a phenomenal Thursday. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye now.